to Ashwaju's um, a, a victory speech. Uh, clinching part, they say, is one thing, but retaining it is a, a totally different ball game. And I haven't been at the helm of affairs in Nigeria since 2015. The APC now uh, faces the daunting task of retaining power in the coming year. Will the party's presidential candidate, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, be that man to clinch it for the APC in the elections next year? That, that's a million dollar question. But let's share his acceptance speech and his thoughts about the challenges ahead with you. The governors put themselves together as party leaders and many other leaders. We work hard. We didn't break our back. We are here. Very happy and confident, courageous. We will repair our country and we bring it back as strong and the best nation for our children. All the governors, we didn't just coin the name Progressive Governors Forum. We have that appellation. We earn it. It is us. We are progressive. We are a nation builder. We are not destroyers. No intruders. No destroyers can bring Nigeria backwards. Forward, we are moving. I must thank our men and women in uniform, those who make sacrifices of their lives, left family behind, and continue to fight for the survival of this country. Be assured, it is the beginning of that time now. You will get reward and enjoy a part of your life. You won't sacrifice for nothing. I choose politics over fine accountancy work papers. And it is only through this channel that can help build a team, unbreakable team, that will make Nigeria great. This is the beginning. First step taken, second step taken, and we are moving on. You are the great people of this country that have built, that much joy hard to build. We have to be tolerant, perseverance, and love for each other. Let's be determined. That it is only our hand, our brain, our vision that we build a new nation for us. The competition is now over. Those who did not support me, you have nothing to fear. I hold no grudges and grievances. We can do it. We can revive our economy. We can compete well with other nations. We can beat nations like Morocco and others. Yes, we can. And by the grace of God, we will. Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the APC presidential candidate there. It, it talked a lot about um, several issues uh, appealing to the moral conscience of people, particularly uh, when we look at the issue of insecurity in Nigeria. He also did mention about um, what Nigeria should do differently in the area of growing the economy. And then 
about the 2023 election. He has a lot to say about the uh, the PDP calling the party an agent of terror, violence, <laughs> and lying. Um, <laughs> there's a lot that Ashwadi did mention in that speech. Uh, one of the issues we've also discussed prior to this time is his relationship with other aspirants going forward. And he did say that you have nothing to fear if you did not support me. I take no grudges. And we'll see how all of that play out in the coming days. But let us look at, let us begin to um, see the relationship between um, the conduct and the organization, or rather the difference between the conduct and organization of the APC primary and that of the PDP. Uh, before midnight, we already knew who the PDP candidate was going to be. We knew that it was going to be different with the APC given the higher number of delegates and of yes, course no, no, because the, you see, the difference that is that in case of PDP mm. is one per local government. In case of um, it's three. APC is three. Then secondly because of the, the intrigues huge number of and all that they did not start early enough which contributed to it so they did not start early enough and there was not you know the number of um, contestants that you have the number of because that you have in a PDP, and not as uh, so unwieldy as you have in um, in APC. But looking at the speech, I think that one thing that I noticed is that going forward, those who those who work with Ashwajo must find a way of managing it. You know, you know, because um, there are some leaders who it is always good for them to keep to the scripts. You understand? You keep to the message. There are leaders like that. Trump is like that. Biden is like that. You know, when they they, they must reduce, they must remove reduce of the mark of the cough remarks. Of the cough remarks, yes. They have to reduce it because they may get carried away. If you look at Achajo's speech, it's quite too long. You understand? It's quite too long. Because it was it was it got excited and was talking about so many things. You no, understand. he mentioned that, was, that even towards the end that I didn't expect to win. Now that I have won, I'm quite excited. I don't know a, if yeah, that was a joke saying, or something. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that it was a joke. But what I'm saying is that it is important that it must be properly managed so that they will reduce the off-the-cuff remarks and they stick to, so that the message will not be lost in the course of discussing other things. But I think that going forward, actually, I just stands a very, very good chance because it has one quality as a politician that I think I've not seen from any other person. Ashwaju is like Ashwaju operates like a like a Machiavelli um, adherence. You must accept that you must accept that he's a boss. If you cross his path, he will show you who the boss is. But no matter what you do, no matter what you do, if you come back and you acknowledge his leadership, he will forgive you. Mm. That's his style, which is uncommon. It's quick to forgive. Yes, it's quick to forgive. No matter what you do, it, when, it, at that time when you confront him, he mm. will move against you and crush you and show you who the boss is. You will go. You can go for so many years. If you come back and accept his leadership, he will forgive and even relate with you more than... Even reward you. Yes, more mm -hmm. even reward you for that. There are instances in Lagos, people who have had issues with him, mm -hmm. serious issues, and they left. Mm -hmm. And they came back and rewarded them, and they are one of his closest aides now. Yes. It's like no more, no more than three. Mm -hmm. So when you have that kind of... When you have that kind of forgiving spirit, you will go far as a politician. That's why it's not somebody that will say, like, oh, for example, for example, a lot of people will expect that, oh, given the role he played in the political career of the vice president, the vice president should not be seen to have, you know, <laughs> confronted him and to be um, engaged in the same struggle with him for a position. Mm -hmm. But actually, is the kind of person that if tomorrow the vice president calls him, and go to meet him in his house. They will resolve it. As far as it's concerned, that is in the past. What he will think is, how do we move forward? How do we collaborate? I, I'm told we're due for another commercial break. We'll take a break now and return with more. Don't go away.
You're welcome back. Now we're looking at um, uh, the speech of the APC presidential candidate. Indeed, um, you notice that it, it talked about quite a number of people. He mentioned the vice president, the Senate president, and all of the um, aspirants that stepped down for him. Uh, but he didn't have the time to touch on the other aspirants, and one of whom was um, the former Minister of Transportation, uh, Ruth Miyamichi. Yes. How do you see, you know, he talked about the need for yes. the candidate to you know, bring all these people back together yes, in and, one uh, fold. And you see, Aishwaju has to um, reach out to people like Rotimi and Mechi because he has that energy. You always need uh, such a person in the room, somebody who can tell you the truth at any given time, and somebody who has so much energy to spare. And uh, for someone who successfully ran um, President Puari's campaign uh. um, on two different occasions, and delivered victory, I think that it will be useful to Ashwajo as well um, in terms of his organization, and his, um, skills, and all that. So uh, what Ashwajo needs to do now is to identify even those who did not support him and bring them closer. Um, all of the former ACN members step down for Ashwajo, except the VP, yeah. because um, Badaru was ACN governorship candidate um, in Jigawa State, and uh, he's, he's someone who had also benefited from Ashwajo himself, uh, which he would readily admit. So he decided to step down. All of them, the old ACN, they stepped down. So I think that um, others Every big politician involved in this kind of race will know those who supported him and those who did not. Uh -huh. um, there were those who were never supported him at the beginning but decided to support him at the last minute. You know, he needs to keep such people, keep their support, reach out to those who did not think that it was necessary to support him. People like uh, Yerima Bakura, uh, Ahmed Sani. Ahmed Sani still remains very strong in Zamfara State. You know, he's the godfather of the current governor, godfather of Yari himself. You know, they were all people who worked for him. They were his commissioners. So he's still popular. He may not have done well in this contest, yeah. but that's someone that you still need because he's still very relevant in his home state. So as well needs to reach out to such people. But more importantly, he has to retain his base continue to galvanize his base. And as uh, um, Mayor said, he has to watch what he says at this time because, look, at the end of the day, when you say something, you complain about something in Abel Kutab. Some people are already reading ethnic meanings to it. You know? and there's no reason in the world to read ethnic meanings to what he was saying. But in this season, people do not like you would twist and put so much spin on whatever you say. Their goal is clear. They want to make sure that you don't get to the price. So I just have to realize that at this time, you can't make statements that can cost you victory. And if at the end of the day, this thing does not end in a victory for him There's in the it. election, mm -hmm. then all of the sacrifice, especially from those governors, from Northern Nigeria, the 13 governors, and the other people, the delegates from Northern Nigeria, who in spite of the fact that they were, uh, the, your, his rivals gave them money, still stuck to him. Uh. There were some who even rejected dollars outright to say, look, Ashwaju is our, our uh, candidate. Yeah. You know, so he needs to win that election to make the support that these people have given him count. Absolutely. And he has to be careful, you know, what he says and all that. They need to manage him. I know managing big men is, is, is sometimes very difficult. But they have I've, to do it. I've had friends. You know, sometimes we even want to manage a man and he chooses to do it his own way. I have friends who have worked with such people before. It's, uh, sometimes it is after the person has spoken. I know there was a particular interview that Eru Five granted. And my, my friend was like, God, if I was in town, I would have stopped that interview. 
You know, when you have a boss who wants to speak his mind all the time, in the political season that we found ourselves, you can't do that. You can't do that. You can't do that. You may mean well. You may mean well by what you are saying. You can't do that. But the enemy is keen to 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 give it a different interpretation, and then you'll be embarrassed. Absolutely. So he has to. Um, you, you mentioned the Brutima Michi earlier, and yes. um, I've also read commentaries about the need for APC to look the reverse way, given uh, what seemed to be a firmer well, grip of the PDP and the division between, you know, um, the APC. I think, that that, I, think, the I think one of the things the Ashwaiji should look into is how to solve the problem. Between, because Magnus, Magnus, Abbe. Senator of Magnus yeah. Abe mm -hmm. is, um, is, is a very strong supporter of Ashwaiji. Yes. And. Um, I think Ashwajo. I think Ashwajo will do that because, like I said, he seems to have this. He's very. He likes reconciliation. He yes. doesn't the forgive any. Then you should try to make sure that he solves the problem between Amechi and Abe. Mm. You know, uh, in this season, because um, I think Abubakar Abu is a formidable opponent. Just hold on for a minute. I'm told we have a call. Can we take the call very quickly, and then we'll continue with this conversation. Hello. Good evening. Hello? Good yeah, evening. We can hear you. Yes, okay. Uh, I think I think one angle that probably you've not touched is that uh, I want you also to look at the issue raised by all. Uh, during his presentation, remember, uh, former Minister of Technology, of Science and Technology, has raised a certain issue of which I want uh, you to highlight and perhaps draw the attention of as you are due to look into that issue. Okay, I think that we've talked issue about the, that. The, Ibo, the, the, the South the East, East. The Southeast. We have talked about that in the previous, uh, um, in the previous the, something, yes. the commentary. But it is also still part of what we're saying that the need to bring together the aggrieved uh, members yes, of the party. Because you see, in politics, politics is a um, game of numbers. So, as many as possible that you can draw to yourself you have nothing to lose but how difficult do you think that it's going, not to, be very, to, be? It's going to be very difficult. because both of them spoke from a place of hurt they were talking about justice and fairness i agree mm -hmm. but you see um politics is about numbers and nobody sells power a la carte if the without respect to my brothers in the southeast it seems that for whatever reason they are not ready for power yet if you look at pdp there were there were candidates there were aspirants from the southeast they are delegates didn't vote for them uh. they voted for Atiku Abubakar. even in the pdp something that's why the fact that this is a zone that has consistently supported pdp there were aspirants from the east one of them was a former senate president Pius Aye. Uh. they did not vote for him they voted for Atiku Abubakar. maybe they were convinced that they were that even if they voted for him, that's what I'm know. saying. They have to understand because you see, power. I think you the, give party, power to you. the party has to consciously take some steps to accommodate the Southeast, both the APC and the PDP. But they also must and make I think more the efforts. PDP, the PDP, over the years have uh, has not been fair to the Southeast because if they keep giving you their votes, they keep giving you their votes, and in all of those years, 16 years. You didn't think that it made sense to to even bring a vice president. Since 1999, the yeah. Southeast has not produced the vice okay. president, neither has he produced the president of our country. I mean, it's, it's, it's just not right. Okay. We've lost some years, but I think that the parties can consciously make that happen. Because if a party decides that this is what it wants, and they galvanize the voter to support the party, definitely it will happen. The, after, all, have the Senate the South -South, for after all, when um, the PDP decided to mm. take power to the South-South, nobody will imagine that a South-South candidate can win True. election in our country. True. So it's not all about Especially one uh, from, one from numbers. From Bayesa. Yes, someone from Bayesa, the smallest uh, by, by, by way of uh, population and all that, the, the smallest uh, in the country with just eight local governments. Yeah. But they produced the president and he won a national election. He yeah. won with a huge landslide. Defeated Buhari with a huge landslide. 
So if it was possible, why not? Well, I don't. I I, I, mm -hmm. I still think that if it was possible at that time to galvanize support for that candidate and he won, how did he win? He won in North Central, won in uh, in uh, all of the southern regions. So the southern states generally was dominated by by good Lord Jonathan. In 2019, the South has um, had the um, vice presidency slot for the PDP, mm. I believe, and um, he might also even be going well, the there. Article didn't the article did mm. mm. He didn't win. Uh, and the way the way it is now with the article um, candidacy, they might also be looking at the southeast. They don't have an option. Yes, I, I've even had. Is between the southeast or and the south and south. 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 I've had that. Uh, has even made moves. To bring um, um, Okonjo Iweala from from um, from World Trade, World Trade uh, yes, World Trade I Organization. I don't know I don't think whether the woman. WTO or couple. I know that, and even that 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 one could even face some po political hurdles, you know, because because Okonjo Iweala is on the Delta. country. In some part of the country, they may not vote mm. uh, for a, a woman. Uh, because they would think ah, if anything happens to the president, is the woman that will become, you know. So we still, we are not mature politically for that, especially in some parts of our country. But does this feel like that, 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 is, uh, that is winning the APC ticket in um, some, somewhere in the north? And, you know, that is yes, a I primary election. Mm -hmm. When it comes to national election, with all of those conservative states coming together, mm -hmm. you know, the chances of uh, even this person, I wish her luck. But Very if you remember Mama Taraba, even women refused to vote for her. And at the end of the day, she, and she was very popular. Then, you know, so let's turn our attention to the caller. We have another caller. Um, good evening. Welcome to the program. Hello. Good evening. Are you there? We'll get back to um, the call segment so in a short while. I think, I think mm. it's the parties are thinking of winning. Mm. They are thinking of winning. The rivalry between the APC and the PDP now is fiercer than it has ever been. If PDP went into a contest in 2019 with the APC and won 17 states, took some states off the APC, if we add Abuja to it, then you could be saying that PDP won 18 states mm. to APC's 19. So this is the this is the, this is what happened. And given now, the given the perception, given the fact that the, the president won't be on the ballot, mm. you sense that APC will not want to take chances at all this time because Buhari, the usual Juggernaut, uh, mm. is not going to be on the ballot. The ballot. That's right. So. You want to believe that uh, uh, Tiku may have a good chance this time around. So and the way to deny him is to make sure that you do your calculations very well. Where your deputy comes from is very crucial. It's very, very crucial. So for me, parties are just looking to win. They want to win. And I guess this is one of the reasons the Southeast keeps getting um, overlooked. But I still believe that if we could go the way of the South-South in, uh, in uh, 2011, 11. it can happen. Uh, because it, it was happen. the PDP and it was the biggest party at the time. Yeah. Uh, but let's look at um, Ashiwaju versus Atiku. Now, Ashiwaju did mention the PDP during his speech um, I don't think he mentioned any other opposition party apart from the PDP. But that's the, that's the, that's the main opposition party. The mood is different, however, online, and I know you have your exception to that. There is Peter Obi in the Liberal Party. I've heard a lot of our guests let me, talk let about, me, just yeah, a minute, okay. talk about Kwakwaso and his um, and PP movement. Don't you think that the APC should not take these other parties for granted? No, 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 no. It's not, they are not taking them for granted because they vote for Labour. It's a vote against PDP. You know, um, Peter Obi 
used to be a member of PDP. He was running me to Atiku at the last election. Yeah. So if he had remained in PDP, he would have been a major plus to the party. Yeah. So being the candidate of Labour Party will take a lot of votes from PDP. That's one. Because of the sentiment that, that the only the only Southeast person that is on the ballot, okay, no, um, that's another that's another candidate, another party. But OB is very popular now online. But you see, what you see online is different from the voters. There are a lot of young people they enjoy themselves online. That's different. Online, the vice president, vice president, um, um, <coughs> vice president, or. Show, um, uh, Oshibajo. Oshibajo was trending on online. Was trending online, and some people mm. just assumed mm. that mm. they even did one one lousy box post, and they said, "Oh, it was one that was going to win with mm. something percent." I wanted to lose by a wide margin. We talked about that earlier. Don't you think the difference between that and this is that in that case, it was the delegates that was voting. In 2014, this was the same perception no, that there, no, was, there was no way no, the party could no, have won. I'm telling you, it's different. I mean, it could have won. The circumstances are different. Mm. If you look at, for example, now, if you look at Atiku, Atiku is going to be a very formidable opponent. Mm. And we have to concede that. Yeah. But I can see Ashwaju beating Atiku. And I will tell you the reason. The reason being that the governors, the governors, APC governors, if they work hard, and retain their states in the north. You understand? If they retain their states in the north, maybe lose one or so, but they retain majority of their states in the north. Mm -hmm. Then you look at, because Ashwa Jutinumbu is on the ballot, in 2015, in 2019, it was not on the ballot. But because he's on the ballot now <laughs> as the presidential candidate, it will galvanize vote from the southwest. So it's likely that they are going to have more votes in the southwest mm -hmm. than in previous elections. Yeah, because we galvanize the voters from the southwest. You understand? No, then the when, voter party will not. Uh, then when yes, voter party will not have because it will galvanize them because he's running for president. Then when you now look at the east, Ob is going to take a lot of votes from PDP. The southeast used to be a fertile ground for PDP when it comes to presidential election. But B is going to take a lot of votes away from Atiko mm. from in the southeast. And I can see, because you see, um Ashwaju is a Ashwaju is a deal maker. He always because when you look at Lagos, in most times in Lagos, when there is an election in Lagos, you will see that he used to bring in people. So you can have a I see him having an alliance with Kwakwaso mm. when it comes to the presidential election. Um, I'm, I'm told we have to leave now, but um, the election is still next year, BKO, and yes. a lot of things will change over time. Oh, in course. fact, they say a day is a, I mean, of course. one month is a day, long a time long in, in politics. In politics yes. and we, we might see some candidates from another party entirely you know, coming up in the course of time. I want to say a big thank you, um, Mayor, for your time on the program. Thank BKO, you. thank you so much for always sharing your wealth Thanks. and wisdom with us. That's Journalist Hangout. We'll be back tomorrow with more. I am Nifem Yukuntoye. Thanks for joining us.